Question 6 from the 2019 National 5 Physics Examination from the SQA and it's from Section 2. A student is investigating connecting different combinations of resistors in circuits. Part A, the student sets up a circuit as shown and we've got to calculate the current in the circuit for 4 marks. We see reproduction of the circuit to here, the side of the page and you can see it's going to be a series circuit because there's nowhere else for the current to go except around that circuit. So we say it's a series circuit. And if we know it's a series circuit, we know the current is going to be the same at every part of the circuit. And that will be the reading on the ammeter. We've got to calculate the current in that circuit. So we go to our data book and we should know that V equals IR. And that really comes from Ohm's law. And Ohm's law properly stated is R equals V divided by I. But we want to find the current in the circuit, so we have to rearrange this equation here and find out what I is on its own. So, dividing both sides by R, the total resistance of the circuit, we get V, we get the following, we get V divided by R is going to give you the current in the circuit. So, our final equation will be the current in the circuit is equal to V, the voltage, which is attached to the circuit, the supply voltage, 12 volts, divided by the total resistance. I'm going to write it as that way, RT. So what is the total resistance of the circuit? Well, we can see it's a series circuit, so all we have to do is add up all the resistors. So RT, the total resistance, would be R1, plus the second resistor, plus the third resistor. So we have a sum to do. We have got 180 ohms plus 180 ohms, plus the 120 ohms. And that's going to give us a total of 480 ohms. So the current in the circuit then is going to be equal to the voltage across the circuit, which is the voltage from the supply, 12 volts, divided by the total resistance, which is 480 ohms. So we do that in a calculator, we end up with a current of 0 0.025 and the units for current is the amp. We can also multiply that by a thousand to give us milliamps, so it's the same as saying 25 milliamps, 25 milliamps. And that's just one to show off. So the current flowing that circuit is 0 0.025 amps. Question 6, part A, part 2. Calculate the power dissipated in the 120 ohm resistor. Now, before we start, let's take a look at the meaning of the word dissipate. Dissipate means to waste. So when power is dissipated, we mean that power is wasted. And what's power? Well, power is the amount of energy per second. So what we're really saying is calculate the power wasted in the 120 ohm resistor. Now we know for the resistor when we pass electricity through it, it's going to heat up. So that electrical energy is going to be changed into heat energy. And the power is how much heat energy is changed in per second. So when you see the word dissipate, think of that as the word as wasted. What's the power dissipated? Means the power wasted. So we can remove that definition right now and start on our circuit. Here's the circuit under question. Which is 12 volts, there's a current of 0.025 amps going round the circuit, which means it's going to pass through all the components because it's a series circuit. So the current through that circuit is going to be 0.025 amps. Now, when I'm asked to do a circuit like that, the first thing that I want to do is to collect all the important data about a certain component. And the component we're looking at is a 120 ohm resistor. Now, in electricity, there's three things you need to know. You need to know the potential difference across it, the voltage across it. You need to know the current going through it, and you need to know the resistance of it. If we know V, I, and R, we know a lot about that resistor. And also, we've got to find out what the power dissipated in it is, so we can put P below that. So let's fill in our list as best we can. Do we know the voltage? Well, not at the moment. Do we know the current through it? Yes, we do. 0 0.025. Amps. Do we know the resistance of the component? We do, 120 ohms. Now, if you look very closely, the main key ones are V, I, and R. If I know two of these top ones here, and I'll just draw a wee dotted line on here to separate them. If we know V, I, and R, then we can find the missing one up here. So V we know is equal to I times R. And we can find that in our data sheet. So we go to our data sheet 
here it is here. And you can see there's the basic equation up there, which will highlight for you. V equals IR. So if we know the I, the current going through the resistor, and the value of the resistance, we can easily find the potential difference across it by multiplying the current and the resistance. So we get 0 0.025 amps multiplied by the resistance 120 ohms. And if we do that in a calculator, we get 3 volts. So we now know that the potential difference across the resistor is 3 volts. We know the current passing through it. We know the resistance passing through it. Now surely we can find the power which is dissipated in it. Now if you look down the data sheet list, you can see we have uh, power equals E energy divided by T, but we don't really know the raw energy, so we can ignore that one. But if we look at this equation here, we can see that power equals IV. If you know the current going through the component, if you know the potential difference across it, you can find the power dissipated in it. So we can use that equation right away, because we've got all the information that we know. We know the current, and we know the potential difference. So the power in this case is going to be equal to IV, we're going to use that one. So the current is going to equal to 0 0.025 amps, multiplied by the voltage, 3 volts, and we get an answer of 0 0.075. The units of power are the watt, so we're going to get a power dissipated as 0 0.075 watts, which is the same as saying 0 0.075 joules per second is lost in that resistor. Now, I can use any of the power equations here. Just to show you, I could use this equation here. I could use P equals I squared. How can I use that one? Because I know the current and I know the resistance, so I can find it. But it's just optional. But just to prove it would work either way, I could do it up here. P equals I squared R. Current squared times resistance. I've got to be very careful this time, so it's going to be the current squared, so 0 0.025 squared, multiplied by resistance, 120 ohms. Do that in your calculator, and lo and behold, you get the same answer again, 0 0.7, 0 0.075 watts, both the same answers. And likewise, I could go down and I could do the power equation here, P equals V squared upon R. I could easily work that out because I've got V and I've got R. I can work out the power from them. I'll leave you to do that as an exercise. So there we go, working out the power dissipated in the resistor. The key thing is mark down the list of the key values of that component. Potential difference across it, current going through it, and resistance off it. And then you can work out the power. That comes down at the very end of the list. And you can have your choice of power equations if you've got V, I, or R. Question 6 continued, part B, part I, and it's four marks we're playing for. The student sets up a different circuit as shown, still with the 12 volt supply, with two 720 ohm resistors in parallel, and a 120 ohm resistor coming after that in series, and with the ammeter there. And what we've got to try and do is determine the total resistance of the circuit. Now, in all these circuits, what we concentrate first of all in is the parallel part of the circuit. So focus in on the parallel part of the circuit. And you can see there we have got 720 ohms in parallel with 720 ohms, two identical resistors. Now, there's a quick rule of thumb here. That means a quick way of doing things. If the two identical resistors are in parallel, two identical resistors, then the total resistance is really equal to half one of the resistors. So we've got two resistors here, 720 ohms and 720 ohms in parallel, then the resistance of the parallel part is going to equal to one half of 720 ohms. And if you work that out, you get an answer of 360 ohms. So we now know that the resistance of the parallel part is now 360 ohms. So we can replace those two resistors with an identical resistor with a value of 360 ohms. And now we're in a position now to calculate the total resistance of the circuit. So total resistance of the circuit is equal to R1 plus R2. We have done the parallel part. It's going to be 360 ohms plus the 120 ohms. And you're going to get an answer of 480 ohms. So the total resistance of the circuit is 480 ohms. 
Question 6, Part B, Part 2. State how the power dissipated in the 120 ohm resistor in this circuit, and that's the circuit which we were just looking at there, compares with the power dissipated in the 120 ohm resistor in the circuit in Part A2, which was that circuit there. So you can see that each circuit, if we look at the resistance of it, the total resistance of this circuit here is 360 plus 120 is 480 ohms. And the total resistance of this circuit, which was the previous one, the total resistance was exactly the same as well, 480 ohms. Now that means that the current which flies around this circuit will be identical in both circuits because you've got 12 volts and you've got total resistance of 480 ohms. Just to remind you, the current flowing in the circuit is equal to the voltage of supply divided by the total resistance, which equals 12 volts divided by uh, 480 here, which is going to give us 0.025 amps. And in this circuit here, you get the same idea. The current flowing in the circuit is exactly the same, 12 volts, divided by uh, 480 ohms, and that's going to give you identical current, 0.025 amps. So we've got identical current, and that identical current is going to go through the 120 ohm resistor, through the 120 ohm resistor. So if you've got identical current and identical value resistance, then the power supplied to, if you can remember our power equation, P equals I squared R, if we've got the identical currents, so the current is identical, and the resistance is identical in each case, which means only one thing, that the power dissipated in both resistors is the same. So power dissipated in both resistors is the same. Power dissipated is equal. And that's just done the final part of the question.